we're taking all of these different jetpack fibers and kind of piecing them together and seeing how we can make an app that's a little more usable and um, useful for us. So we just got through three videos talking about clean architecture. Now in this video, we actually have a working app and everything um, seems good to go. Basically what we're gonna need to do now though is create some unit tests for this app. And that's gonna give us some problems here because if we go to test our app, um, we'll very quickly run into major, um, major IO overhead, like really heavy processing overhead, and our testing is gonna take forever because we're not using something called dependency injection. So in this video, we're gonna give you a brief introduction to dependency injection and how we can implement it using a, a Jetpack library known as Dagger Hilt. So let's go ahead and jump right into that. First of all, what is a dependency? So a dependency is basically any class that any other class depends upon. So uh, for example, here in our books view model, we've got inside this class, we've got these two private variables here, and one is toggle finish use case, and then one is get books use case. So we could say that our view model or books view model is gonna depend on both of these classes here. Well, then the next question becomes, what is dependency injection? And how do we do it? Uh, well, basically dependency injection is gonna be uh, sending these classes or injecting these classes into my books view model. And basically what we're gonna do is be, we're gonna do what's known as constructor injection. And that's gonna be where to put these um, within inside the constructor itself. And then we're gonna use a third party library known as dagger hilts to go ahead and um, initiate and construct these classes for us. But basically the reason why we need to do this is if you look at this code, we have our books view model and you've got these two classes here. So if I wanted to go ahead and write some unit tests for my books view model, well, I have to instantiate a view model. And then after I create this books view model, um, this, this class is gonna be created, my toggle finish use case. So if I go into there, you can see this is also going to create a books repository. So if I go into um, there, you can see that this is also going to create a API for a retrofit interface. And then it's also going to create a DAO for a database interface. Um, so basically, anytime I come into my books view model, and I create an instance of this class for testing, it's gonna also create all of my use cases, which in this case, we only have two, so that's not that many, but in a, in a large scale app, this can get much more complicated. And then after that, it's gonna create any um, dependencies of these use cases as well, which is gonna involve at least a, uh, a network call up to retrofit, um, out to our Firebase database using retrofit, and then also, it's going to create a database for our local cache. And that is just a lot of heavy IO that we really don't need to be processing for just a simple test. The next benefit that this is gonna give us is we're actually be able to write less boilerplate code here, which means we'll have less repeated code. So let's go ahead and look at some of our repository classes up here. If we look at our books repository, you can see we have this API um, instantiation up here. And then if you look again in the book details repository, we have that same API instantiation. And this is pretty much repeated code. Uh, so we don't really want this and we want to avoid this as best as possible. Now with just two of these, it's not a huge deal. But like I said before, as this um, application grows and gets bigger and on a larger scale project, having repeated code all over the place can make it really difficult to manage. So we wanna minimize this as much as possible. So that's something that dependency injection is actually gonna help us do because when we move this API and then this books DAO into our constructor and do our, in, our um, constructor injection, well then, then Dagger Hilt is actually gonna build these out for us and we're only gonna need this code in one spot. So to do that, we need to actually start implementing Dagger Hilt. And before we can do that, we need to add it to our Gradle file because this is gonna be a third party dependency that we're using. So let's go on over to our project level Gradle file. 
And um, in here, basically, we're going to add a dependency block here. And inside the dependencies, we're going to add uh, one for a Gradle plugin. So com.google.dagger for one built Android Gradle plugin 2.44. And then over in our top level, build that Gradle file. Up here in the plugins, right under contact, we're going to need to um, add one more. And it's going to be our Dagger Hilt Android plugin. And then once we have that plugin added, come all the way down to the dependency section. And I'm going to add a, another section down here. Dagger Hilt. And then in here, we just need two things. Implementation. Um, Google. Dagger. Hilt. Android. And then version 244 is what we're using. And then after that, we're going to need to add a apt, which is our Kotlin annotation processing tool. Um, you may have noticed we have that in the plugins above as well. And this is going to be Palm, Google, Dagger, Note, Tyler 2.44. Um, so basically, CAPT is, like I just said, it's your Kotlin annotation processing tool. And Dagger Hilt is going to be really heavy on annotation within our code because it's going to use those annotations to generate and instantiate all of the dependencies that we need that it's then going to um, perform dependency injection on. So with that being said, you definitely need this um, dependency down here. And then you also for sure need these um, this capped plugin up top, which should already be there if you've been following along in this video series. And then after that's done, go ahead and click Sync Now, and we should be ready to start actually implementing Dagger Hilt as soon as this build finishes. So for starters, let's go into Book Application. And for any, uh, any application where we're using Dagger Hilt, we now need, to, uh, now need to annotate our application with the Hilt Android app. So go ahead and do that, and it's going to have that import for you. And if you do a build of your project right now, for example, let's just do that actually, um, you'll be able to see some of the code that's being auto-generated by Hilt already. So here you can see we've got a dagger debug now, and then we've got a Hilt aggregated um, debug here. I'm not gonna dig into all of this, but basically you can see it's already, even with just that one annotation, it's already auto-generating a bunch of code for us. So let's go ahead and start using this to implement our data injection. Um, and I'm going to start off with our screen, uh, this one right here, our book list screen. Before we jump into any of these individual files up here, let's go into main activity and just see where we're calling our book screen. So we're calling our book screen right here, and you can see immediately we're already dependent on our view model. And basically all we're going to have to do here is we're going to change um, we're going to change our view model to use a Dagger Hilt version of the view model instead. Um, so we need to inject this book's view model into our composable destination within our navigation, within our nav host. Um, but we have a problem here because we can't actually use Dagger Hilt to inject annotation inside of a composable function. We have to use a special type of composable function so that we can inject our view model there. Uh, but that requires uh, one more dependency that I actually forgot. So let's go back over to our application build.gradle file, and let's go all the way down to the bottom. And we're going to need to add implementation Android X Hilt, and then we need um, this Hilt navigation compose. And then after that, be sure to sync your Gradle files again. And once that's done, go back into main activity. And this view model here, um, yeah, basically line 37 right here, at least in my code, it's 37. Um, if you're writing your own code, this obviously might be spaced a little bit differently. 
Um, but down here where we have our view model, we just need to change a view model to hilt view model. And basically this is gonna inject an instance of books view model um, that shares the scope with the book screen navigation destination. Dagger Hill will be injecting uh, that view model. And basically we need to annotate the class that's gonna be hosting our book traffic application with um, some Android entry point annotations here um, so that Hilt can generate the necessary code for that. Now, in this case, our book tracker app composable, you can see we're calling it right here within our main activity class. So right above main activity, we're just gonna add the Android entry point application, and that's gonna allow all the dependency scopes to be set to the, life, to the lifetime of um, this activity, the main activity here. Now, inside of our books view model, we can actually start injecting these. Um, so we need to take these two dependencies and we're going to move them inside of a constructor up here. We're going to add um, inject, at inject, and then constructor. And now with inside that constructor, uh, within that constructor, I'm going to paste both of these. And of course, that's going to give me an error because we cannot instantiate them in here. Um, so this is going to be same variable name of that type. And then the second one, the same thing, it's gonna be the same variable name of that type. And let's delete some empty lines here. Um, and basically here we have Dagger Hilt. We've set it up to do use constructor injection to inject a toggle finish use case and then a books use case. If we build and run an application now, we're going to get an error. And basically the reason for this is we've told Dagger Hilt to go ahead and inject um, the books view model with these use case dependencies, but we never actually told Dagger Hilt how to provide these use case dependencies. And if our goal is for Dagger Hilt to provide our books view model, well, then we really need to ensure that Dagger Hilt can provide um, all of the dependencies inside, as well as any dependencies inside of those dependencies, such as the repo and the um, get sorted books from cache, other use cases, and anything else that we're using. So we need to go all the way down our dependency stack and provide and essentially tell Dagger Hilt how to provide all of those dependencies. So let's get started. If we let's just start with this top use case here, get initial book list from repository. So again, we've got two dependencies here. I'm going to cut those out and I'm going to put them up in a inject constructor. Put that uh, paste your dependencies and again, need to um, reformat this to fit the parameters being passed in in the constructor. Oops, I can delete that part. Okay, there we go. We've got those two within. Um, so now Hilt can now inject this use case, but this use case also has some dependencies as well. So we're gonna have to tell Hilt how to how to provide those as well. So to start off with, let's go into books repository. However, right away in the repository, we're gonna run into an issue because we have our API, which is a um, instance of our retrofit imp implementation. And then we have our books DAO, which is using our room database. And we need to tell um, Dagger Hill to how to provide the dependencies all the way down, but we're not gonna have access to the retrofit or the room uh, code libraries to do that. So what do we do here? Well, basically, we're going to add a module that can do that for us. So if we come up into our data products, I'm going to add a new package. And I'm just going to name that DI, which stands for dependency injection. And then within this new package, I'm going to add a new Kotlin class or file. And this I'm going to call it books module. And this is actually going to be an object this time. 
And then within that project, we need to, uh, first we need to annotate this as a module or a dagger hilt module. And then uh, use the install and annotation and I'm gonna use the um, singleton component. And basically we'll import that and the module annotation up here, that's gonna tell Dagger Hilt that this is a module to provide instances of these dependencies that we need. The install in with this predefined singleton component means that uh, the dependencies contained within this module can't be provided, um, they can be provided anywhere inside of our application because of the singleton component. Uh, basically, this is gonna be application wide. So let's start with our room dependencies here. So I'm gonna add a function in here. New function provides, we're gonna call this room DB. And this function actually I'm gonna annotate with singleton, which means that we can only have one of these implementations across the entire application. And then app provides so that room knows, or not room, dagger help rather, knows that this function is gonna be providing dependencies for us. So within this function, we're gonna have one um, parameter that we need to pass in, and that's gonna be our, uh, our context. Luckily, because we have this single pin component up top, we should be able to get our um, application context pretty easily. So application context, and this is just gonna be app context, context, and then this function is going to return our books DB. Now inside of this, basically all that we need to do is um, build our database. We can type that out again, um, but we're trying to minimize repeated work here. So let's go back over to local books database. And in here, um, all we're going to need is this room.database builder. So go ahead and copy all of that code and then go back into your books model. And all we're gonna do is simply type um, turn and then paste that in there, import our context. And then I guess we'll need to change this. I need this something different than the other one. We'll name this context. And then just as easy as that, we have our database. But we do still need to tell Dagger Hilt how to provide our demo. So above that, I'm going to just add another function up here. This is going to be another app provides, um, and this is going to be fun provides room DAO. This is going to take a database in books DB, and then this is going to return a books DAO. And then inside of there, all that we need to do is to return database dot DAO. Import that. And there we go. We've got the DAO in place. Um, now, finally, we need to tell Dagger Hill to provide an instance of our retrofit um, to use our retrofit API. So, again, you can copy most of this from the repository. But before we get there, um, I'll just add another function down here. And this one is going to be another singleton, and another provides for Dagger Hilt. And we're gonna call this fun provides retrofit. This is gonna return a retrofit instance. And then here, type return, and then let's go on over to our books repository and find our retrofit builder, which you can see is right here. Let's copy all of that down to the build and then go back into your books module, paste all of that same exact code. And we, we now have the retrofit, but we still need the API. So let's kind of get one more function down here. This one can be just app provides, doesn't need to be a single pin. And we'll do fun provides retrofit API. Um, and then this is going to take in retrofit, I'll take retrofit, and it's going to return a books API. Books API. Okay, and then inside of there, 
all we need to do is return retrofit dot create its API class.java. So now we have everything that we need for a module for both retrofit and for ring for dagger adults to know how to provide those for dependency injections in our application. So with all of that in place, we can go back to our books repository and we can now do our constructor injection here as well. So add inject constructor and then inside of this constructor, we are just going to give it val API of our books API private val books DAO. Um, books DAO. And you'll notice we have two errors here, and that is, of course, because we have the same variable names up here and down here now. Um, so, our solution for that, because this is all now going to be auto generated and created by our dagger hilt, is going to delete all of that. And now we've implemented our constructor dependency injection on our books repository. But actually, just one more thing here. I'm actually going to mark this books repository as a singleton as well, uh, just so that we only get one of those across our entire application because we don't need any more of them. And uh, basically, this is a pretty standard for repository classes because we don't want different data stored in different instances of this repository across our application. So having just one of those is, um, is definitely better for us here. So Dagger Hilt now knows how to inject our books repository with all of its dependencies. So let's go back to our get initial list from um, our get initial book list from net use case. And we've got our repository, that one's done. But we also have this get sorted books from cache use case use case. So let's go into the get sorted books from cache, and you can see here we have a repository again. Um, so I can grab that out of here and we can move that up into our constructor. So let's add a constructor, add an inject and import that. And then inside of the constructor, we are just gonna add our books repository. And that is really all that we need to do. We don't need any other scoping annotations or anything like that, like singleton, because that doesn't matter for the use case here. We just have one more use case to look at here. So let's go to our toggle finish use case. Let's um, grab both of these private variables up here, cut those out. We're going to add inject constructor, and then again, using constructor injection, we are going to reformat this so that we're just declaring them instead of instantiating them. And we get that all spaced out perfectly. So that is um, actually all we need to do for that class. And now we're actually done with that first screen here, um, but we do need to do this second screen still. So let's go back into main activity. And we're just going to do the same thing, but it's going to be a little bit easier because we no longer need to um, go through all of our dependency hierarchy because all of these use cases are going to be shared in common here. So basically, change this view model to a help view model. Before, we've already marked this our Android entry point, so we don't need to actually worry about doing that again. Um, but now we can go into our book details view model because basically anywhere where we're using help view model, we need to annotate that. So um, just like we did in our books view model. Uh, oh, actually, we didn't. I need to do that. Um, so up here in our book view model, we need to annotate this as a hilt view model so that we get all of the proper code generated there. And then if you come back into your book details view model, same thing. We're going to annotate that as a hilt view model. And then once we get that done, you see we have a repository here. Um, and we basically we need to take that repository and move it into our constructor, like we've been doing with all of these. So we need to do app inject constructor. Inside of that constructor, 
we can leave that um, state handle and we're just going to end up with a repository in there. Reformat that so we're not instantiating it, we're just declaring it. And I guess what is this file? Um, oh, I guess we're not even using that. We don't need that technically, so we can delete that out of there. Um, now that is good to go, that view model, but we need to tell our book details repository how to inject its dependencies. So come up into your book details repository. And again, we've got an API and then our books DAO. So just like we did in books repository, and actually I'm just gonna copy all of that. Uh, we need that books API and the books DAO in our book details repository as well. So let's add all of that. And then uh, again, you've got errors here because these are duplicated. So we can delete our DAO and our API. And now that repository should be good to go. Uh, but now that we're done here, we can actually trim down some of our code. And that's one of the benefits of using dependency injections. We can delete some of that repeated boilerplate code. So let's go back into our books DB here. And inside of our books DB, um, basically, this entire companion object we can delete because all of this is now going to be auto generated by our dagger hilt. So let's get rid of, oops, let's see, where's the end of that? Um, yeah, this entire companion object, get rid of that. And we're pretty much left with one line there. So that looks a lot, um, a lot more manageable there. And then finally, let's go back to our main application file, our books application. And in here, we can um, actually, we can turn this way down. We can delete this entire block because all of this now is gonna be generated for us by Dagger Hilt. So with that being done, we can go ahead and build and launch our program on the app. And we should notice that this is gonna behave exactly like it did before, right? The functionality is all the same, but behind the scenes, because we're using Dagger Hilt for our dependency injection, this is going to be much easier to test um, and specifically to isolate our view models and our repositories and our use cases and test them with just dummy data using our unit tests that we'll um, actually we're going to jump into in the next video. So hopefully this has been a helpful introduction to dependency injection uh, using Dagger Hilt for you. If it has, definitely like and then subscribe to our channel. And we'll see you in the next and final video in this um, series on our book tracker application that we've been building.